the fifth president of Uganda, Godfrey Lukongwa Benaisa. Godfrey Lukongwa Benaisa was a Ugandan lawyer and Attorney General of Uganda in 1962 to 1968. He served as the President of Uganda from 1979 to May 1980. He was born in Kampala, educated at King's College Budo and Makere College. He earned a LLB in law at King's College London and appointed to the bar of Lincoln Inn. Later, he was appointed as the QC, Queen Council. He owned a private law practice in Kampala. Binaisa was a member of Uganda National Congress and United Congress Party, which in 1962 formed the first post-independent government of Uganda. That is when he was appointed Attorney General, a position he served. And in 1968, he resigned over a disagreement with the President, Dr. Apollo Milton Obote because of constitutional matters. He was not happy with the presidential power of detention. He then decided to go into a private legal practice. When Idi Amin Dada took power in 1971. He left Uganda and went into exile in the United Kingdom. While in London, he got a job at a London office belonging to Graham and James, an international maritime law firm. After that, he was sent to the United States. He worked as a paralegal for a time at the main office of Graham and James in San Francisco. When he returned to London, at that moment, he practiced law in Mount Vernon, New York, while he was still in the US. He became a member of Uganda Freedom Union, one of several anti amin group in exile. When Idi Amin Dada was overthrown, he returned to Uganda. At that moment, Yusuf Lule was serving as the interim president, a position that took 68 days. On the 20th of June, 1979, Benaisa was appointed the president of Uganda by the National Consultative Commission, a supreme governing body of the Uganda National Liberation Front, UNLF a coalition of former Ugandan exile who helped and participated in removing Idi Amin Dada from power. Most of our leaders at that moment 
who are locked up in a tribal confusion. The moment those leaders come into the position of power, they intend to forget why they are appointed president of Uganda. Who they are supposed to rule. In most cases, instead of thinking about Ugandans, they fall back to their tribal holds and try to keep that allegiance to their tribe. During this period, Benaisa decided to remove the army chief of staff, Brigadier Oyuta Jok. The reason behind his movement, his action, at that critical moment, still remain a puzzle. Was it a personal hatred directed towards the brigadier or his dislike for the former president of Uganda, Dr. Apollo Milton Obote? Nobody knows. But we all know that Benison After independence, he was Uganda first attorney general. He played important role in Obote's government. He was one of his right man, right hand man. He helped create the 1967 constitution, including the amendment that abolished the kingdom in Uganda. That led to the declaration of Uganda as a republic. As the president of Uganda, came a time he was there when Uganda was going through a very turbulent time. The capital city, Kampala, was in bad shape, real bad shape. Murder, looting, and robberies was the order of the day. At that moment, many people in central region were not happy that he had replaced their favorite president, Yusuf Lule. Benaisa started making miscalculated moves. At the moment when he was trying to assert his own control, he decided to use his position to deploy the powerful Major General David Oyere Ojo to Algeria as Ugandan ambassador. At that moment, one could begin to understand why things were not working for all these people, all these presidents who come and go, who come and go. You cannot remove a professional soldier because you don't like him and then make him an ambassador so that you can get rid of him. That was a real miscalculated move. Benaisa tried to introduce his own system of government. 
the umbrella. Under which those standing for political office can do so without belonging to any political party. He followed the footsteps of Lule. All of them, the moment they are sworn in as president of Uganda, they forgot the interests of Uganda. All of them got involved in promoting personal hatred and trying not to honor the Moshe Agreement. When he tried to remove the chief of staff, it backfired. It backfired. And that is what he should have known before he even started. Because the chief of staff, he was one of the people who fought for the liberation of Uganda from Tanzania. They sacrificed their life fighting right from Tanzania into Uganda, taking over the government of Idi Amin Dada. When you look back, and you look at the action, of all this president, starting back at the time when we got independence, then you can realize that their story are almost similar. We move to defend our interests, our tribes as the first move, but really not considering that Uganda is big enough. for all of us. The job of the president of Uganda is not a gift on a silver plate. It is a job that is supposed bring us Ugandan together, to keep us Ugandan together, to make sure that we develop and those development are distributed equally among the people of Uganda. But that is what most of those leaders forgot to do. And that curse <coughs> is still moving on up to today. We consider our tribes 
to be more superior. And sometimes we do consider that a tribe in Uganda is Uganda. And that is not true. Uganda, we have a lot of different tribes. From Buganda to Bugishi, Bugishi to Teso, Teso to Achole, Achole to Lange, Lange to Madi, and to Benyankole, and to Alus. They are all tribes within Uganda. And when you put your allegiance, your own tribe, <clears throat> then you have lost. The reason, then you have failed the people of Uganda because Uganda is big and Uganda is big enough for all of us. Those type of action, some of us Ugandans never expected it to come from most of our leaders who are well educated, as you see here, he's a lawyer with the title of a QC. Queen's Council. We expected more from him. We have expected more from our leaders. But those leaders, they let us down. It is not the people of Uganda that let Uganda down. It is the leaders we had and the leaders we are having, even up to today, are the ones who are letting our people down. When he tried to send the chief of staff, Oyeto Jok, to Algeria, it backfired. It backfired because people thought he made a grave mistake and that is exactly what he did. It backfired and it led to his removal from office on the 12th of May, 1980, by the military commission, a powerful organ of the Uganda National Liberation Front. Headed by Paul Mwanga, whose deputy at that moment was Yoweri Museveni, the leader of the patriotic movement and he is the current president of Uganda. When he was removed, Uganda was then ruled, led by the Presidential Commission of Uganda, which included Paul Mwanga, Yoweri Museveni, Oyeto Jok, and Tito Kelo.
the presidential commission ruled Uganda until December 1980. General election. Benison then joined the Uganda Patriotic Movement and became the vice president. The election was held and Milton Obote, Uganda People's Congress, won the election. The result of that election was disputed. Leading to URM7 to launch a guerrilla rebellion. If you look back, the development of the current movement political system, which is now being used by the National Resistance Movement, is based on Benaise's ideology of umbrella. He used that system to consolidate his power. Sick. To unite Ugandans into the same political force that failed. As I said before, most of our past and present leaders lost their way. And we all know that the truth always circled back to where it started. And now, we know who real Godfrey Benaisa was. He was a UPC at one moment, and he became a national resistance movement at another moment. And is a person who keeps changing from one party to the other for his own personal benefit. When we look back to Uganda, we have some of our political leaders from the Democratic Party. who started right from 1962. They never trade places. They never changed their allegiance from one political party to the other. They stayed in the game until the day they died. And today, we have very few people. We have very few people who stays with one political party and then die 
as the member of those parties. We are just changing. If they tell him, I'm going to give you a little bit of money, he just move. Ah, the people of Uganda is now reaping the mustard seeds of hatred. A road we should have never traveled. It was something not worth fighting for. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe. I will be back.